All right, we just got here at Bayswater Day Ticket Lake. Never seen it before. First impressions, lovely lush green reeds all around the lake. Um, it's quite a muggy day. Looks like there might be a chance on floaters. We'll have a quick shoot around, see what swims are free. See if we can see any fish. Right then, when approaching a new venue, my tactics are always the same. Try and locate some fish, um, either be jumping out, in the edge, you know, bubbling up, whatever it is. Today, they're out on the surface, you know, I can see a few black shapes milling around. So, yeah, always bear in mind when you come into a new water or any water on any, any type of session, always try and find fish before you start. You know, if, if they're in the area, then you've got a chance. Right, I'm definitely going to go in this peg. A few fish out there on the surface. Looks like they're well up for a floater. I'm going to go and get my gear. Right, what I've got here, I've got two different size of floating trout pellets. I've got 11 mils that are similar to size to the hook bait I'm using and some smaller ones, like four or six mils. Um, having different sizes get the fish competing. Um, one little sneaky edge that I've added to these is the raspberry plume goo. This one's quite dense compared to some others in the range and uh, when they're on the floaters, bits of the goo break off, dropping down through the water, bringing the fish up. I'm going to stick probably half a dozen to ten spots out, see how it goes. If they start taking, um, I'll get the rod out there, but it's important to get them feeding confidently before you try and cast to them. You know? So I'll put this off a little bit further out where the fish are, back of the wind, hopefully that will, sorry, onto the wind further out, and that should bring them into me. So let's see, let's see how it goes. Yeah! Well, I read one off the top. Little uh, side hook, um, 12 mil pop up, little brown one. Been uh, spotting out a few floating mixers, uh, floating trap pellets, sorry, with uh, a bit of the raspberry plume goo on them. It took me quite a few casts to get one on. Um, I missed a couple. Taking me around the reeds. Coming away now. All right, some of the key things to float fishing is compared to fishing on the bottom is how fine and finesseful is like your end tackle. Obviously, it's on the surface. Fish are looking up. There's no backdrop on it. Um, it's nothing to blend into, so you've got to keep everything nice and fine. I'm using a hook link with diameter of about 0.20, it's a nine pound end gauge. Um, quite a stretchy line, very strong, but it's ultra thin, so if, you, if, if you're encountering snags and that, you might want to go up a little bit, but that obviously reduces the amount of bites you get. I've got a size 12 mixer hook, very small, it's a tiny little thing, but they tend to, once they, they bed in, touch wood, um, they tend to stay in, and um, for the size, they're pretty strong. Well, I've had this on a long time now, but because I'm fishing with such light tackle and a soft rod, it's giving the fish the opportunity to, to play itself out. But you've got to take your time when using small hooks and, and like light hook links. You know, you don't want to, to beef out. You could suffer a, a line breakage quite easily if you, if you weren't ready. The soft rod takes a lot of the lunges out, which does help when you're using light tackle. Right, he's still in the net, I'm just going to let him get his breath back, he fought his heart out. So uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to put a bit more bait out, probably spook him for a few minutes. By the time I've dealt with him, there should be a few more fish still taking, so let's get on with this.
right here we have a lovely Bayswater linear, probably 15 to 18 pound this one. Um, we saw them taking floaters, gone straight in with it, the wind's drifted them down a bit and we've moved on to them and it's a uh, work to treat. I'm going to slip this one back and show you what I'm up to. Right, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about my end tackle, what I've got on here. This is the nine pound end gauge to a size 12 mix hook, tiny little hook. You notice that I've hooked the boily. Uh, most people hair rig. Um, I think when the hook's sitting directly under the bait in this way, it's almost harder for them to see. Um, it does reduce the gape, so I've not gone in too deep, but um, I find I get uh, less sort of rejections, you know, hooking them in this way. And the float, little 10 gram cruiser. It's good for the range. We know we're plopping them out there sort of 30, 40 yards and I can just, just pick out that red bit and then it's easy just to see the bait a little way behind. Length of hook link, I tend to go for six or seven foot. Um, too close and again you get rejections and too long and it's hard to cast. So six, seven foot seems to be the optimum. I'm going to get this back out there and try and snaffle another one. Right, just got them going again, a few more spots. Um, the wind was being a bit of a nightmare, it was quite a bit of a ripple and it was really hard to, to keep a tight line, you know, that was floating in towards us and it kept getting loads of slack out there. But it's just flattened off, put one out, stopped feeding for a little bit and uh, one's just come out of nowhere and it snaffled the hook mate. It looked a little bit bigger um, when it took it, but um, you can't really tell at that range, but hopefully we'll find out. It's got to be a 2 0 isn't it? <laughs> so here he is, lovely £20.12 from Bayswater Day to Kit Lake. It just goes to show you can get them taken on floaters when the weather's right and uh, catch lovely fish like this. I'm going to slip him back and uh, see if we can get some more. 